Hey, Tommy from The Run Testers and welcome to another monthly roundup. In this video, we talk about all the things that we've tested over the past month that we haven't been able to cover in another video and we just want to tell you about. So let's dive in and see what we all picked this month. So my first pick this month is actually an app. It's called Day One. It's a journaling app. It's not built directly for runners, but it's basically become my go-to option for my running journal, which I've been keeping for several years in various forms. I've used like, written diaries in the past or just a Word document or some kind of weird iPad diary I had for a little while. And I do all this in addition to my master spreadsheet of all the shoes I've used and the various testing on those. But in terms of my actual running diary, I'm now using this app called Day One, which is free. There is a premium option available, which I'll come on to later. But in the free option, you basically can pop your deets in it's a searchable diary which I think is very handy for me because I can put some notes on shoes and other gear I'm testing in there and then search the app for them if I need to remind myself of what runs I did in the various shoes I've used but mainly I'm using it just to record my feelings on the run any reasons that things weren't going ideally that day whether I was ill whether the conditions were bad whether I'm running solo or with people you know, how I felt generally the paces I aim for the paces I hit all that kind of stuff you normally have in a running diary I really like to have a record of it somewhere just to look over and I really like the way that day one presents that information like if you copy and paste your activity from Strava, which is what I do, you get the map showing on the calendar view of day one, which I really do like. So you can scroll through your year and see all the days you've run, little maps of where you've been, you can go in there, see a bit more details of what you've written, and then hit the hyperlink to jump directly to the Strava activity if you want to. So just a very nice and neat app that serves me very well as my uh, as my running diary with also the ability to search it for ideas about gear and that kind of thing. So like I say, it is a free app if you're just using it in one place. You can get it for multiple different devices and then if you want to be able to uh, update them all at once via the cloud you need a premium account which is £32 a year £32.99 I've not felt the need to do that myself so I think the free app works really well if you're just using it on your phone and I'd recommend it if you're looking for a nice free and good looking training diary that you don't want necessarily to be on public platforms something like Strava I don't really like to put a load of notes on there and that kind of thing I prefer to have it all local to me especially if I'm making notes about gear next up is my glasses hooks which a couple of people have asked about on video so I thought I'd put them in the monthly roundup so people know uh, what I'm talking about uh, so these are basically little hooks sit on the glasses means I can wear my glasses on the run. These aren't sports glasses in any way. They're a lightweight frame that I can wash and they don't seem to get too you know, disgusting or damaged or anything like that. But the glasses hooks you can put on them means that they don't move at all on the run. Like you can adjust these hooks to exactly where you want them on the ears. They sit right behind it and hold the glasses in place no matter how sweaty I get. They can get these from loads of different places and loads of different kinds. But I basically bought a mega pack of different uh, glasses attachments from Amazon for £5.99. And that's what I'd recommend doing because the only disadvantage of these hooks is they also have to fit onto the arm of the glasses and on some glasses I have the uh, the opening does isn't quite big enough to put onto the arm in which case I'd recommend the little circular attachments you get in those packs little like that you can squash pop them onto the arm of the glasses and they kind of sit on the ear there and hold them in place those little circles aren't as comfortable as the hooks and I do think the hooks are less obtrusive now I'm hoping that people can't really see these in general life because they aren't exactly uh, particularly cool, but I don't think people can really see them. And yeah, they just sit behind the ear. They're very comfortable. I wear these glasses with the hooks, with headphones, hats, headbands, everything like that. They're never uncomfortable and they don't get in the way. So if you just want to run with glasses on, you don't want to pop your contacts in every time or get laser eye surgery or some other solution you might have or buy a dedicated sports set of glasses, these are a very cheap and easy solution that I think work really well. And I've been using these now for months and months and months. And you know, I only really put my contacts in now for very sunny days uh, when I want to use uh, some of my various sunglasses. And then my last pick this month is this Sealer fleecy cap with ear protectors. It's got a pretty ridiculous name. I'm going to read it. It's Sealer CW. Those are inverted commas aren't mine. They're Sealers. Uh, CRW cap WND SC. So uh, we'll have it obviously in the caption if you're going to look for it but it's basically a really good cap for cold conditions it's also actually water repellent on the top there with that fleecy lining when this came in to test i didn't really think i was going to wear it much to be honest because you know, it's, it's quite a look you've got to go for with it but also i thought if it was ever cold enough to use this cap i would normally just pop on a beanie hat or a headband and then one day i went out in a beanie hat or a headband it was minus one and i crested the top of a hill and realized it was a very cold clear day i was gonna be running into directly into very annoying sunlight for the re most of the rest of my run and there was the benefit of having a cap with a peak as well as all those warm features you get on this cap so it's now pretty much become a go-to option for me when conditions are dropping to around zero or sub-zero doesn't happen that often here in London but it has happened a fair bit this winter and then I often 
go to see family in Scotland and Poland, in which case this cap comes in very handy in the winter. So it's obviously a really warm cap. It's not just to use for everyday runs. And if you're going to go and do a very hard workout, then I wouldn't recommend it, even if it is very cold. But it is a really nice option to have when it is cold. It's pretty, still pretty breathable, I'd say, given how warm it is. And it is quite useful in general life as well. It's become a bit of a favorite for the school run for me. Now I've just basically leaned into and embraced the look of having the cap with the events. Might as well pop it on now. Uh, I've also run with this with glasses, headphones and stuff underneath. These ear flaps are quite loose, so it doesn't get too uh, annoying or uncomfortable to have them pressing in against stuff. And yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a statement piece, but certainly the people who live in much colder areas than me who I think would benefit from this cap even more than I do, like having using it, like I say, just for the occasional run. If you're out there, you know, plowing through snow or zero conditions all the time, this is a really, really good cap. It's nice and warm, still quite breathable, keeps a little bit of water off, although it's not great if it's going to start pouring with rain, obviously. It's pretty expensive. It's £65 or $70, so it's probably one that's only really worth it if you are every day hitting those cold conditions and want a cap that's going to get you through them. But it is a very effective tool for winter training, I have found, especially if you're in places where it's often cold and clear and you're going to have to keep the sun out of your eyes. So my first monthly pick are a pair of gloves because in January it definitely was at times definitely gloves worthy running conditions. Now, as I said in our previous kind of running gloves video, something I really value in a good pair of running gloves is something that are kind of nice, small, packable, but obviously do have to kind of give you that warmth. I think particularly for me, at the beginning of the runs and also at the end of my runs as well too because in between i think i've kind of generally warmed up well enough now ones that i've been trying this month are these these are adidas's terex cold ready gloves now they retail at 45 pounds but i've had a look around and you can pick them up for closer to 25 pounds which i think make them you know, they're still not cheap but i do think that makes them a bit more better value in terms of what they are and what they offer now the first thing i like about them and i will have to say they are very kind of snug fitting gloves now that works fine for me they're pretty skinny in terms of you know the amount of space you're getting around the fingers but i've got quite skinny hands so for me it's been absolutely fine and they really do kind of wrap around your fingers really nicely and again they're nice and packable as well and li i like the size of them they're not as small as the saw running gloves that i typically use but it definitely is a little bit more material here which means i think they give you a little bit more warmth in general and then also, which is also important here, particularly if you're running out with your phone, and I do, and also I have a watch that has a touch screen as well, you do get some very tactile elements on, on most of the fingers and in the areas, the inside of the palm as well here on both of these gloves. So it does allow you to kind of interact with your phone pretty easily. It does let you interact with your watch as well, something that I want to be able to do when I'm wearing gloves uh, when I'm out on my run. So these are gloves that I would definitely keep around. As I say, I've got the saw ones that I use. I think the North Face E-Tip ones I think are really good as well here. And I think these are a nice addition when the conditions are a little bit colder. If you want something that is kind of a small, kind of snug fitting pair of gloves that does allow you to still use your phone. It also gives you enough in terms of material these are good options to do uh, or to grab, I would say. Now, as I said, they retail £45, but you can get them for less than that. And I think if you can get them for less than that, they are definitely worth looking at. If you like a small fitting pair of gloves that are gonna offer a good amount of warmth, particularly in colder conditions, these are ones that have worked very well for me when it has been pretty treacherous in terms of that cold this month. So my second monthly pick are a pair of truly wireless open air air conduction earbuds. So similar to what we've seen from the Shox Open Fit, which me personally, I didn't absolutely love all aspects of. So there's definitely a new breed of other alternatives, cheap alternatives. I've used the Soundcore AeroFit, the Soundcore AeroFit Pro, and the Soundpeats Go Free 2 as well this month. And the Soundcore AeroFit is the one that has stood out for me from a running perspective. Now. It is cheaper than the AeroFit Pro. And in terms of the things that you're missing out on, I don't think it really, from a running perspective, really kind of mattered for me. So you've got that kind of additional neck bands, which for me, I found the fit reliable enough for me on the AeroFit. You're getting kind of support for kind of high resolution kind of playback, which again, I think it's a bit misplaced here. And the spatial audio as well too. In terms of design, it's very similar to the Shox Open Fit, but I found the fit and design more reliable overall. I think it's better weighted in terms of the design. I've worn it for kind of longer runs. It's been absolutely fine. I haven't found them uncomfortable to wear, and they've been relatively reliable in terms of my running from a kind of slower pace runs, kind of quicker pace runs as well too. So from that point of view, they've been generally solid. The touch controls are actually pretty good examples of it. There's a nice big surface area compared to what you've got on the AeroFit as well. So I think if you are using them on the move, they are a little bit easier to use. 
In terms of sound performance, you are getting the same EQ modes. So with air conduction, it's a little bit more customizable. And I think in terms of the performance on the Aerofit, it definitely feels brighter. Overall, you know, just a more impressive sound, that better open air experience compared to the Aerofit Pro. If I had to put it in, you know, against other air conduction earbuds, I would say that it probably sits somewhere with the JBL um, open air air conduction earbuds that I've tested, not quite shocked open fit quality overall, but I think it's very good for what you're paying in terms of that price being under a hundred pounds, under under a hundred dollars. And battery life is pretty solid as well. There's a bit of a drop off again compared to the Aerofit in terms of numbers, but in terms of using them over a week, leaning on that fast charging feature that you get here as well too and a relatively portable case as well too it's a little bit longer than the one on the aerofit pro but in general it's fine to kind of put into a running uh, belt which is something that i've done with no problem as well too so my second pick the soundcore aerofit which are truly wireless open air air conduction earbuds which come in cheaper than the Shox Open Fit, but also I think offer a good overall performance, sound, and does it for less money as well too. Now using caffeine on your runs in a timely manner can offer some pretty good performance benefits. For example, towards the end of long runs where you really need to scrape that final bit of energy out of your barrel. There are loads of ways to get caffeine in on the move. You can obviously buy gels that carry caffeine. Carb drinks, powders now also come with caffeine varieties too. But if you're looking for a really fast and easy measured caffeine kick in a really simple, portable, small, easy to carry format, and easy to eat by the way, then the Caffeine Bullets Ginger Raw Chews, these little bad boys are ideal. They come wrapped like little regular toffees, they're quite small, but inside this small thing, they pack 33 milligrams of caffeine per chew. They have a soft and chewy texture. You can buy mint flavor, but I've recently been using these Ginger Chews. I don't use them every run, but they're really easy to stick in your pocket. So I always have a couple of them about my person as a kind of backup, just in case you never know when you're gonna need some extra little help. I also like the fact that I can keep my caffeine intake separate from my energy as well. Sometimes that's really useful if you want a bit more precise control so you don't have to bash down an extra gel to get that caffeine kick. Oh, and they're also um, vegan friendly, so thumbs up for that. Now, if you've watched our socks videos, you'll know that I often run Instance Performance socks, which are slightly thicker. I like the added sort of padding and comfort that they bring when I'm doing those longer miles and longer time on feet that I tend to do a lot of. But recently, as I've been doing a bit more structured training for the Adidas Manchester Marathon, which is coming up, I've been doing some faster and shorter stuff. That means I've been wearing different shoes and I've been looking for a good workhorse thinner sock that will work better in the more racier sort of snug fitting carbon race shoes you know the kind i mean so these falca ru4 reflect mid cuts have been ace and what makes them a winner i think in my book is even though they're thinner they retain some of the sort of medium padding under the heels here and under the forefoot and around the toe so you're still getting some of that soft comfort and protection but without it being too heavy and they sort of fit in the shoes better there's also seamless toes, which is nice. That reduces the blister risk or any kind of chance of irritation. The thin leg sections here, I think they're nice and stretchy. They dry nice and fast and the wide cuffs sort of spread the pressure out so they don't dig in over time. You've also got a little bit of reflective detailing here. And right now you can pick them up for 15 pounds. So they're not the most cheap, but they're not the most expensive. Now, if you've watched our review of the New Balance SC Elite V4, which is on the channel now, you should do. You'll know that I had some problems with heel cutting here bit of blood on this shoe and so I've been on the hunt for a solution to that and while Compede blister plasters are really good if you've already done the damage in areas of the foot particularly on the heel I wanted to find something that was going to help prevent the cutting actually happening in the first place so I could carry on running these shoes and test them I quite like the shoes now one heel had been cut quite badly the other was going to be cut badly so for my second run when I'm testing I popped on one of these Sidus heel protectors they're like little pads that you can stick onto potential problem areas and they offer just a bit more protection. Now it worked really well for me to stop that second heel going in the test runs of this shoe. That was on another long run that I did with them. But a couple of warnings here, you can't use them on already open wounds because the adhesive bit under here, it's like the stickiest bit of the plaster without the nice soft bit. And that'll be really sore if you're pulling that off skin that's already torn. But you can double up with a regular plaster. So regular plaster on, pop this one over the top. But you've also got to be careful that you're not adding too much padding, too many layers, as that can actually increase the friction and make things worse. But I think if you're looking for something that's going to stop the, the rubbing or catch that really early on, these are great. And they're particularly a good thing. I think pop a couple of these 
in your kind of pack if you're going to be doing an ultra and that you never know what might happen having a little bit of backup can help so these are the sidus foot protectors <laughs> The Brooks Run Visible 6 inch short tights, I really like them because they come down to like a sensible length um, so they're not really tiny tiny shorts um, and also they have a nice high waistband as well and an adjustable waistband too. Um, they've got absolutely shed loads of uh, storage in the pockets. You could fit like you know six gels in each although you might find that they get weighed down and gradually come down and they've got these reflective strips just around the waistband and around the leg as well so the idea is, is that you're really visible at night i'm not so enamored with the like massive like fluoro stripe down the side but do you know what they're a great fit um i would definitely race in them whether pregnant or not but i did a marathon in them at 20 weeks and they stayed up really well they felt really comfortable um, and then obviously I've been running in them and I'm now much, much larger um, and, and they pretty much are never off me because they're the most comfortable shorts. The waistband is like it, it holds its place, but it's soft enough. Um, and I would wear them, you know, whether pregnant or not, as I say. And, and I think they're just a really, really useful, comfortable pair of shorts. So I've never worn Brooks gear before and I'm really surprised um, how good these are. So really impressed by that. This one's a bit predictable for me because I do like the sore running vests, expensive as they are. Um, but I particularly like the colourway on this one, the Sad Girl Track Club, which was started by Molly and Izzy Seidel. If you follow their Sad Girl Track Club Instagram, um, there's some very, very silly memes on there with lots of raccoons, um, which are we're a big fan of in my household anyway. Um, and then it has on the back of it, it has Make Em Cry, which I always think is quite funny, really, to run around a race with Make Em Cry. So again, I raced in this at 20 weeks. Um, pregnant and I'm still running in it now as with all of the sore running vests um, you know you've got the bonded seams uh, you've got the super light kind of waffly material that is just really 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 breathable which I'm particularly grateful at the moment and um, getting a bit sweaty these days and it's just um, it's a bit more fun than some of them are more serious running vests and I like the length of it as well again that's something where unless you want to go full crop which is fine and sometimes I do actually if I'm wearing a running vest sometimes I want it to be that little bit longer so it's not riding up the whole time and yet it's still cool enough that you can get away with it being that long so I love the kind of the ethos behind it, the fun behind it, but it also is a really great technical garment that will just see you really well. And it dries so quickly as well. I wear it one day, I wash it, it's dry again. Like, I love that. The next one is more kind of a public service announcement, really. Um, and these, as with the previous two items, are all just things that I've been using day in, day out lately. Um, and this one is the Chorus Pace 3, but it's the new feature that they installed recently, which is the overnight HRV tracking, which was something that I really felt was lacking from it. So I've all I've used HRV tracking on my Garmin for a long time and I, I really rate it just being able to kind of um, preempt if you think that maybe you're getting to be a bit under the weather, you can kind of clock that in advance. For a woman, I found it's an incredibly reliable way of predicting when my cycle was going to arrive. One thing I'm not sure, actually, is ironically, although I really like HRV, is how reliable it is or what you can read into it when you're pregnant. Um, but it is a new feature. So if you've got the pace two or the pace three it has recently been downloaded um, onto your watch so you can now get overnight hrv tracking this is the elliot kipchoge uh, edition if you're interested it's very cool with a nice uh, fun wristband there that really fits fits the vibe and little red and green buttons and things but i'm getting used to the coros uh, interface in general but i really like the fact that they have added that to their features without you having to pay any extra for it and it's just kind of arrived on the watch and my final one this month, I feel a little bit sheepish about um, because I'm not very up on the full nutrition and things. Um, but in the spirit of things that I'm just using like pretty much every day, it's this, uh, Psy MX uh, Whey Protein. Um, I don't really care that it's diet, it just happens to be what they sent me, but it's the chocolate one and there's a strawberry one. Um, I don't drink it on its own because um, I'm not trying to build that kind of muscle and also um, it's a bit sweet for me. But what I have been doing is our gym uh, does really lovely post-workout smoothies, but they cost an absolute fortune. Um, and so what I've been doing is making up my own smoothies with it, with a little scoop of that. And I have, I have found that I feel so much better for it if I have that straight afterwards, particularly at the moment. Like I just need to get that nutrition in like straight away if I'm doing like a hard spin class or... 
um, you know, any kind of efforts. I'm really conscious that I need to make sure I'm topping up those stores. And I have found it makes a difference. I feel um, a lot better and I'm recovering a lot quicker. And I like this one because it just blends really nicely. It's got enough sweetness if you just put a scoop in with your banana, your oats and your milk. Um, and it tastes exactly the same as the smoothies that they're charging me like six quid for at the local gym. So I am genuinely using this day in, day out at the moment. So that is why I'm recommending this one. So just a couple of picks from me this month and both are long sleeve tops for running in in the winter. Uh, the first one of those is the Seiski logo uh, long sleeve top. Now Seiski have made a bit of a name for themselves as being a, a fashionable running brand. They make really nice looking kit and quite often you find people wear it all the time, not just when they're running. Um, but the thing I really like about the long sleeve top is that it's a very generous fit. So I'm a medium um, and it, it just has a lot of space in it. It's very roomy, but it still looks really nice as well. Uh, it's a really comfortable one to wear on the run. Um, it's quite warm, so it's probably best used for uh, the colder points of winter. I definitely wouldn't use this uh, when I was training in the summer, uh, but I've just been out using this on a um, uh, an interval session and it was absolutely perfect. It means I could run down there and it kept me nice and warm, but when I was doing the intervals and I got a lot hotter, it was still quite breathable uh, and comfortable as well. So it's just a really nice, comfortable top. There's quite a lot of different versions of this. Seisky tend to bring out new colorways of it quite a lot. Um, but it is, uh, has a nice uh, soft interior as well, so it's nice and comfortable to wear. It doesn't feel too much like uh, a performance uh, top like a lot of other tops you, you might try uh, that you really wouldn't want to wear other than when you're running. But this just feels like a nice, comfortable top, but still has a lot of the features that you would want from um, a performance uh, top. Uh, so yeah, big fan of this, um, and I've been wearing it quite a lot. So my next pick is a slightly different long sleeve top. So this is a North Face Mountain Athletic long sleeve top. Um, it's uh, RRP is £75, but I think you can get it for about £40 on JD Sports at the moment. Um, it's a little bit different from the Seiski one in that it is very much a performance top. It isn't as generous in terms of fit, so it's quite tight. So if you're the sort of runner that doesn't want a really tight fitting top, maybe go for a larger version of this or don't get this. Um, but if you like a... Uh, base layer that really hugs your body then it's great for that uh, i've done quite a few sessions in this now um, it's very very uh, good at protecting against the cold it, it keeps you nice and warm um, but also it's quite breathable as well so i don't get too sweaty in this top and i roll the arms up in it and it works very well uh, if i'm doing speed sessions and things like that it doesn't really have any features to talk about apart from that breathability uh, it's nice and stretchy uh, but overall it's just a solid comfortable base layer top that uh, works really well for the winter months uh, and it looks really nice as well. So yeah, just a couple of long sleeve tops for me this month. That's it from us for another monthly roundup. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the little bell and check the channel for all the other videos we've got coming out at the moment. Catch you next time.